Hello, everybody, and welcome to this, the latest in our podcast series here at the Export to Japan platform. And today we are going to learn a lot more about the whole agenda around this terminology of smart city. And, uh, and I'm delighted uh, to welcome uh, as our special guest today to help us understand and navigate more about this, Mr. Takahiko Nagumo, who is the executive director of the Smart City Institute in Japan. Takahiko, welcome to the Export to Japan podcast. Thank you, honored to be invited. Oh, it's our, it's our pleasure and good, good to have you here. Now, to help us kick off and get an understanding, we, we obviously want to understand more about your the institute that you're representing, and I'll, I'll ask you some more questions about that in a moment. But before we dive into that, let's just look at this terminology and this expression of smart city. It's a bit of terminology that has become more and more apparent over the years. And I'd just like to understand from your perspective, what, what sort of definition do you give to that? What, what is a smart city and what does it mean? All right, thank you for asking the question. So smart city is about implementing the digital, the digital technologies to solve urban, urbanization related uh, social issues, the traffic jam, the waste management, energy management, online medicine, uh, autonomous driving and so forth. So the 70% of the world populations now are living in the cities. So the urbanization is, gets very uh, serious and uh, without the help from the technologies, I don't think we can solve that. So this is a kind of global uh, trend uh, that all the cities in the world are trying to utilize AI, blockchain, big data, robotics to solve the uh, issues they're facing. So that's overall definition of these forces today. That sounds incredibly exciting. Yeah, thank, thank you for that clarification. And I guess, you know, with that momentum um, being, being built around the world, that's probably part of the momentum of why the Smart City Institute was formed. For, for the UK listeners and viewers on this side that probably, you know, we all look at Japan and we think it's a, a country of advanced technologies and at the leading edge of many technology initiatives. And certainly smart cities is, is a terminology that, that often gets associated with Japan being at the leading edge. But can you tell us just a little bit more from the Japanese landscape mm -hmm. on what, what, what's, where smart cities are? How many smart cities are there in Japan? What are the leading ones? What, what kind of things are going on? Mm, it's a good question, actually. So we originally thought that we were advanced in terms of the use of the technologies, right? It's a kind of image of Japan, a techie company, a country, right? But uh, when it comes to the implementation of the smart cities or digital government, we are not necessarily the leading edge. Yeah, you know, to your surprise or to my surprise. And uh, <laughs> the easiest ones to remember was that during the uh, pandemic last year, uh, the Japanese government tries to uh, deliver cash handouts to workers who are not able to work uh, and are forced to be uh, to stay home, right? Mm -hmm. Cash handouts. It's a kind of social security, but uh, there is no digital connection between uh, their bank account and uh, their, their digital ID. So we had to deliver one by one manually, which was a kind of wake up call to our shame. Okay, we understood ourselves, right? So we have to really change our mind and uh, introduce the digital government to protect lives of people first, right? And then uh, second uh, learning from the pandemic was that, okay, we centralized everything in big cities like Tokyo, but the population density with the scale of Tokyo turned out to be, you know, fearful uh, infection, right? So Japanese government actually decided to decentralize the use of national land with 100 different, uh, 100 small cities in different locations in Japan. So idea is to put the, don't put the eggs in one basket, right. disperse in different locations, thereby even if when the Tokyo is done, other parts of uh, Japan is up and running. So risk diversification one. And also because of the historic uh, Tokyo centrification, um, centralization, the, the rural areas are you know, suffering from the sharp depopulation, mm. right? And if the population is you know, decreasing rapidly, 
And then there is a short of taxi drivers, short of bus drivers. So you know, we, we, we lose the mobility uh, for elderly living in rural areas. And the uh, tax revenues is going down. Anything uh, you know, uh, negative, uh, everything is negative mm -hmm. if the population is down mm -hmm. that fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so we really have to make the cities across Japan more vitalized. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's a national strategy. So yeah. not only Tokyo or Osaka, but the other major cities at the second tier level will be, uh, you know, um, uh, supported by the national government to become the smart cities. Understood. Okay, I've got it. Yeah, and in in Japan are. The majority of cities that, that are, I mean, you, you mentioned there's up to 100 cities there, but uh, is it mainly an agenda of existing cities and established cities developing themselves to follow the smart city agenda? Or are there any plans or examples in Japan of sort of complete greenfield sites where new cities are being developed or planned uh, in, mm. in a greenfield site that, that are built with a smart city mindset from, from day one? Mm, good question. So basically, we are looking into the uh, brownfield approach, mm -hmm. which means you know uh, re reinventing the existing cities with uh, digital technologies. And only field, only a few are the green field, green fields. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Japan doesn't really have a, you know, such open space, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is that you know the redefine and reinvent what's already existed. Yes. Right. So, you know, the you can name city from the Hokkaido, the Sapporo, Sendai, you know, uh, Aizu Wakamatsu, uh, you know, the, of, of course, Tokyo, Kawasaki, Yokohama, right? Yeah. Then Shizuoka, and Toyota, and Nagoya, Hamamatsu, Osaka, Kyoto, Kobe, Hiroshima, you know, uh, so Kikishi, <laughs> Fuku, uh, Fukuoka, and so forth. And then yeah. some more, right? Yeah. Okay, understood. And and you you've through the theme of this discussion, you've you've touched on some of the key initiatives and, and, and themes in Japan. You you spoke earlier about the aging population challenge mm -hmm. that you you've you face very much in Japan. And you've then spoke a little bit more about this this whole challenge around the rural situation and people moving to cities and things and some very, very interesting agenda points there um, to consider. Um, other than those points, are there any other sort of particular themes in Japan that are exclusive challenges that you're finding in Japan or things that you particularly want to work on? Or, or are they the main ones that we've already touched on? Uh, I, I wouldn't call it uh, an exclusive challenge, but you know, the Japanese people tend to focus on mobility. I don't know, Japanese people are, you know, uh, I don't know, so much attracted by automobiles and trains, right? It's a symbol of modernization in the past. So looking back like 20, 30 years ago, each time new automobile is introduced through a TV commercial, everyone's sort of fascinated, right? Mm. So we grew up in that age. So how can you, you know, uh, develop new automobile system is always fascinating to Japanese mm. people. So mobility is a key area, actually. If you look into any smart cities in Japan, maybe 80% of the smart cities are talking about mobility as one of the first priority. Wow. Yeah. Now, okay, of course, that, of, that's of, of course, you know, uh, uh, responding to the needs of the uh, elderly who returned driver's license uh, because of the age, right? Yeah. So autonomous driving, picking them up to shopping or to see doctors or whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fascinating. And actually, I, I'm thinking through, uh, again, it, here in the UK, you know, we do have universities, research associations, and sort of spin out private companies working on technologies in that space as well. So the, the more we think about this, all the various different angles of opportunity for collaboration, there are so many areas where I think we can, we can encourage uh, our two countries to collaborate more and, and work together on, on these agenda points. So that's very exciting. Mm, and that, okay, mm, go ahead. Yeah, please, you, you carry on, no problem. Do you have another question? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Decarbonization is mm -hmm. another big one, right? Mm -hmm. So climate neutral smart cities will be mm -hmm. the next agenda, I guess. We were 
you know, looking back, excessively focusing on the digital smart cities, mm -hmm. but looking into, let's say, European cities, everyone is talking about carbon neutrality, green first, mm -hmm. right? And then technology, and finally equity. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I would say in due course in Japan as well, we'll focus on carbon neutrality hand in hand with the digital smart cities. And uh, that requires very rapid de development. So rather than having one city developing new technologies, uh, you know, we'd like to exchange whatever is existed in the rest of the world. Right. Understood. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Understood. No, another really key agenda point. Okay. Now I I, I realize that your your institute is still fairly young and it's early days. You've been going for a couple of years now. But but I just wondered and um, it. Are there any sort of examples or case studies that you could very briefly share with us of where you've been able to get successful collaborations with either international local authorities or, or, or private companies? I mean, if there's any from the UK, that would be even better. Um, but but it, if it's not UK wide, you know, any, any international ones, again, just to give us a context of how some successful collaboration may have happened so far. Yeah, from UK, we have a good relationship with the catapult which is a UK smart city organization. Mm -hmm. yes. The idea is to have a memorandum of understanding at high level first between the, uh, the European smart city organization and uh, us. And then generally speaking, we conduct a webinar uh, today because we cannot fly over to UK right now, sure. right? Likewise, you cannot fly to Japan right now. So joint webinar, straight in English only. And uh, the audience can put the Japanese subtitle later to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So the, we would like to have a direct conversation with whoever in UK to talk about the smart cities in UK. And I will talk about Japanese smart cities. Mm -hmm. So we exchange ideas, right? And then second step is to have a big, big forum conference, uh, ho hopefully physically, if not online. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the a more uh, visible person representing a uh, smart city in UK. Uh, let's say uh, Mr. Blackwell from City of London, mm -hmm. for example. For example, mm -hmm. there's the, uh, the, the Tokyo uh, mayor, mm -hmm. Ms. Koike or Ms. Mr. Miyasaka, the deputy mayor, have direct conversation, panel discussion, for example. Yeah. So we have more visible engagement between the parties, right? Yeah. And then at the uh, practitioner level, we can you know, have multiple channels of communication project uh, arranged later on. Yeah, got it. Yeah, very, very good. That's a good example and, and, and a great initiative and very exciting, yeah. So when was your association formed and, uh, and, and why was it formed? What is, your, what is your agenda or your objective? Okay. So Smart City Institute of Japan was established back in November 2019. So it's a little less than two years um, since its uh, establishment. We formed it because we saw Japanese smart cities fragmented and a little weak. Fragmented means that one city has multiple diesel uh, projects, such as autonomous driving in one end and then uh, online medicine on the other end but there's no data integration behind. So fragmentation doesn't really help a productivity to increase. And uh, there are a lot of different stakeholders associated in the projects. You know, the national governments, local governments, the business, the civic entities, um, not-for-profit organization, research institute. So somebody have to play the role of the coordinator. So I found it's necessary to have such organization to be established in Japan. So uh, it's the joint venture between Mitsubishi UFJ Research and Consulting. It's a consulting arm and the Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Conglomerate and the Nikkei, the newspaper company, hmm. right? And the uh, organization is not for profit, so we are not making any money, but uh, with the annual fee from the members, we are running the uh, operation. And so far we have 430 members Majority of them, I would say half of them are uh, local governments and the remaining is uh, split into uh, corporations, um, universities and other not-for-profit organizations. 
And how are you, as you, as you evolve as an institute, how are you interacting with, with other countries around the world? In, in our case, we're obviously focusing on the discussion for the UK. You know, how, how do you go about those interactions and building relationships? And, and what sort of relationships are you looking for with, with other countries and other organizations around the world? Yeah, very good question. So the global trend of the smart cities are alike anywhere in Europe, first of all, and to some extent, the United States, and a further limited degree in Asia. So we'd like to share the practices with these uh, cities are facing similar issues, such as aging, let's say Japanese, uh, Japanese cities are you know, facing the uh, depopulation and aging issues, right? And uh, we are developing you know, the technology to solve it. And then that technology can be utilized in, let's say, UK, mm. right? And the UK might have different technologies emerging for their its own sake, which may be adopted in Japanese cities. So I think it's going to be mutual uh, win-win we, mm. if we talk to each other and exchange best practices rather than inventing something new from yeah. scratch in each country. Absolutely, yeah. So it's, it's, it, you're viewing it as almost a two-way process. There may be yes. some examples where uh, best practice and know-how that has been developed in Japan may be suitable to, to, to transfer out and, and, and export to, to other countries and vice versa. There may be some interesting things going on here in the UK or elsewhere that may be of value for, for your Japanese smart city agenda. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I've got it. I mean, what, if you had to define a, a sort of particular key objective of your institute, something at the highest level, what, what is your goal or your objective of, of the institute? Well, we are an organization sitting in the middle of the various stakeholders. So main purpose is to support the ecosystems of the smart cities in Japan. And uh, I personally I always uh, mention that the such organization like us needs to uh, support cities to achieve its well-being of cities, citizens, right? It's not technology implementation. Technology is just mm. a means to the end. Right. So after implementing whatever the technology is, people need to be happier, right. right? I repeatedly mentioned that words like a mantra. Right. Yeah, I, I understood. That's a great point. And it's, it's well worth all of us that work in the technology space constantly reminding ourselves of that. It is all about the, the users at the end of the day having a positive experience. So, right. Yeah, I've got that. Okay, great. Now, you mentioned briefly there about uh, your organization being membership orientated, and yeah. you, you gave us uh, an indication of how many members you have already, which is considering the relatively short time your institute has been going, that's a pretty impressive number that you've already signed up. But could you tell us a little bit more about the, the, the membership? How do companies or organizations become members? Are there different levels of membership? What sort of members are you looking for, et cetera, please? Basically, any type of uh, organizations are welcome to become our members. And we don't really accept individuals as members. That's only uh, kind of you know, uh, a point that you have to mention. And uh, the, let's say, UK companies or European companies are all welcome. And even British Embassy, embassy is our member. Okay. So, you know, so the embassy is also welcome and the universities as well. And uh, we originally focused on the membership in Japan. That's why we don't have that many uh, foreign uh, entities as our members. But uh, we are open, and uh, we'd like to be a conduit for European companies to the Japanese market as well. So I would like to be a gateway uh, for those who are looking into Japanese market uh, and uh, you know business opportunities. Hmm. Okay, great. Okay, and and is it is it just a, a a flat membership level with an annual fee or a monthly fee or something, or are there different levels of membership involved? Yeah, so we collect the annual fee from the uh, private companies only. Mm -hmm. So you know, the universities, research institute, not for organizations, civic entities are free of charge. Okay. And uh, depending upon the capital scale, we charge different annual fee. Actually, two levels. 
What we will do on, on the website, we, we will we will put on our website, we will put the, the, the pricing and the membership. I'm sure it's on your website as well. Yes, it but is. We'll, we'll also convert it approximately into pounds so that so that the users on this site can understand roughly what mm. that fee is. But but it, you, I know the kind of money you're talking about. It's it's extremely good value for the benefit that, you know, it's 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 not a, a huge amount of investment for for the upside. And and, and on that front, actually, on the point of, of, of the benefit. So, again, you've sort of given us an indication of what your institute is about and what, what you're agenda is but what kind of benefits can the the, the members expect um, from if there were some uk either either private companies working on interesting smart city related technologies or even local authorities that, that may be looking at this agenda closely by by becoming members and joining your institute what what kind of benefits or or, or what what would that get them in effect all right so let's take let's take an example of the uh, private companies first <laughs> So the, uh, the reality of the smart cities in Japan is that it's actually operated by a team of corporations, consortiums of the corporations. So the companies must be a part of it. And uh, where is the window to open the door? Mm. We are actually. Okay. So, okay. If you are a private company in UK interested in one of the cities in Japan for their project, uh, smart city project, uh, you know, they need to open the door to that city, but the all of the smart cities in Japan are member of ours. So once they come, they can open up the consortium and uh, open the uh, the conversation, hmm. right? And uh, besides, you know, since we are delivering webinars almost every day, actually even today after this, okay, yeah, in a year we had uh, two hundred and twenty webinars. Wow. You, you know. Uh, <laughs> Four out of five days of the week, we were running wow. the webinars. That's impressive. Amazing. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. And uh, the guest speakers are from corporations or the municipalities or not-for-profit organization startups. Mm. So we are essentially information hub mm. of the Japanese smart cities. Mm. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Yeah, re yeah, really good. And a, clearly a very impressive uh, um uh, focus that you have there and, uh, and activities you have going on. Right. Okay. And, uh, just one more. Yeah. So at least twice a year, we conduct a large scale symposium mm. with the Japanese uh, ministers open up the conference first, like, like uh, Minister Hirai, who is in charge of the uh, digital technology, or Mr. Kono in charge of the regulation. They were the last ones. Uh, that open up the uh, conference uh, in January, I, I guess, yeah. And then we invite major speakers dedicated to the smart cities. And the corporations are also welcome to make a presentation with a sponsorship fee. So it's a kind of a you know, uh, marketing tool as well. Yes, yes. Corporations. Yeah. That's that's really good. Yeah, thank you for making that point too. And and I guess as we do on a global basis, as we start to work our way through this current pandemic, then there will be more opportunities, I guess, for 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 face to face meeting and exhibitions and conferences and things. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to the days when 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 those those things come back and we can all travel a little bit more. That's something to look forward to. But yeah, good good to hear about those initiatives you have as well. And I think as we just sort of come to a conclusion now, I think we've covered all the main topics that I intended to for this discussion. But I just wanted to recap again going back to the different areas of, of, of organizations that you're you're sort of welcoming on board to to engage with you so you mentioned that there's a big ecosystem on but you know all countries around the world there's a big ecosystem involved in smart city agendas so really from your perspective it can be government to government kind of relationships high level national government you you clearly have a good relationship with the embassy already and organizations like ours um, so that high level government at the regional government, at the city government level, you would be welcoming all of those local authorities to get en engaged and then going through to research in institutes, universities, and then through to those private companies that are actually working on technologies in the smart city agenda. So all of those different categories in the ecosystem, you would you would sort of welcome to, to engage and become part of your, your, your institute and, and, and take the membership. Yeah, so basically I would like to welcome any type of entities. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't reject, but the national government is a little too big. Okay, <laughs> to, understood. To, right? it's, it it should be national government to national government. Sure. Right? sure. But local governments, we are more than welcome to, you know, uh, partnership 
with the uh, national uh, local governments in UK. Yeah. And also the uh, smart city organizations like us in UK are good partner. It's an equal footing partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually those organizations, supporting organizations include corporations, universities, and not-for-profit organizations, civic entities as members. Yeah. So that's a second tier, I would say. And uh, if the uh, individual company or universities would like to have uh, membership with us, we are more than happy to. So basically, anyone is okay. Only exception is uh, individual. We don't accept the individual as a member. Completely understood. Yeah, that, that's completely understood and acceptable. Yeah, noted at all. Okay, very good. Well, listen, I know you're a very busy man. Um, I think you've got more webinars or more things that you need to be getting on with. So we are really, really grateful for catching a little bit of your time today. And um, that has been a great discussion. And I think it's been such an interesting and valuable one. I, I, you know, there's clearly so much exciting stuff going on over in Japan and, and your institute is, is at the forefront of that. And, and as you know, there's exciting stuff going on here in the UK around this smart city agenda too. So um, I, I hope by rec recording this podcast with you and pushing this message out there, we can encourage more UK companies and local authorities to engage um, and, and get more two-way traffic going between the UK and Japan. So, so thank you once again for, you, for your great time, uh, Nagumo-san. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Um, as part of pushing out this podcast, on the Export to Japan platform. We will include links to your website, contact details, and, and all other information like that. And we will encourage as many people from the UK side here to, to engage with you and become members of your institute. So thank you so much for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the discussion with you. Thank you. Bye now.